You know, a while back I told some friends that you really shouldn't expect so-called justice from any government justice institution. Because even if a ruling goes in your favor, you're still forced to pay for the system. You can't get out of it. And how just is that? Well, given what just happened in the Supreme Court, I think a few other people are starting to understand that. Because the court just rejected 10 attempts by American civilians to retain a few scraps of the vestiges of their right to keep and bear arms. Hi everybody, I'm Gardner Goldsmith for MRC TV. You know, since 2008 and the now infamous District of Columbia v. Heller majority opinion penned by Antonin Scalia, many Americans who understand the nature of rights and the Second Amendment have lamented Scalia's wording. Because at the close of the opinion in which he said the right to keep and bear arms is an individual right, which is easy enough to figure out, he added essentially that, well, you know, rights can be attenuated. The next section of our opinion points out that like most rights, the Second Amendment right is not unlimited. It is not a right to keep and carry any weapon, any weapon whatsoever, in any manner whatsoever, and for whatever purpose. Which undercuts the very definition of the word right, since rights are supposed to be unassailable by the state. That's the point. Well, it turns out that Scalia's error has caused all kinds of problems, now compounded by the fact that Chief Justice John Roberts and the liberal majority on the Supreme Court of the United States, the SCOTUS as they call it, just rebuffed numerous cases brought by folks defending their gun rights and made more frustrating by how some have reported the story. So, for example, we have Richard Wolf of USA Today, whose first line speaks volumes. Quote, the Supreme Court wasted little time Monday making clear its reluctance to wade back into the national battle over gun rights. Uh, I hear the alarm bells going off. I, perhaps you do too. The very fact that he can express a sentence saying there's a national battle over gun rights is pretty problematic. If people have an inherent individual right to keep and bear arms for self-defense, which they do, of course, then how can there be a national battle over them? Wouldn't it be a given that others can't infringe on one's right to self-defense? And that doing so, whether it be alone or with a gang called government, is improper and aggressive? One doesn't need the wording of the Second Amendment to know this is manifestly true. It's simply based on logic. But Wolf goes on. After refusing to rule on a challenge to New York City gun restrictions because they were rescinded while the case was pending, the court turned away all potential replacements that would have given its conservative justices a chance to strengthen the Second Amendment. Why should the Second Amendment need strengthening? After all, it's a simple statement prohibiting all forms of government from infringing on the right to keep and bear arms. Well, perhaps 19th century philosopher Lysander Spooner was right after all, when in his treatise No Treason, The Constitution of No Authority, he pointed out that the Constitution has not stopped politicians from expanding the purview of the state and increasing their attacks on individual rights. Sure seems to be the case today because Wolf added this. The justices had a long list of challenges to choose from, including several testing the threshold issue of whether guns can be carried in public nationwide, as they currently are in some 40 states. Other issues included bans on assault weapons, high capacity magazines, and handgun sales. There were 10 gun rights cases total that the SCOTUS could have heard, many of which object to similar infringements in different states. But it's productive to highlight a few major points. First, the earlier case in which the court refused to hear a challenge brought by New York City residents against a city statute making it virtually impossible for them to take firearms outside the Big Apple where most of the gun training facilities are located, saw Roberts and the lefties turn a blind eye because the city authoritarians argued that they had changed the statute, which they changed after it was challenged first in a lower court, and that they say they allow for easier movement now. But the fact remains that the city government has the gall to create a statute and that they can revise it again to go back 
and critically crack down on people's rights once more. The point is that the suit was brought before the revision and the injustice was done harming people and attacking their rights. Nope, Roberts and his pals, Kagan, Sotomayor, Kavanaugh, and Ginsburg all voted to allow the injustice to stand, thus allowing the precedent and practice of the city controls to stand anytime they want to bring them back. And their majority decision in refusing the case was just two pages, while the dissent written by Sam Alito was 31. In it, Alito included this, as noted in an excellent piece brought to us by Ammo Land. Quote, by incorrectly dismissing this case as moot, the court permits our docket to be manipulated in a way that should not be countenanced. And Alito added, since then, Heller and the McDonald v. Chicago case of 2010, the lower courts have decided numerous cases involving Second Amendment challenges to a variety of federal, state, and local laws. Most have failed. We have been asked to review many of these decisions, but until this case, we denied all such requests. On January 22nd, 2019, we granted review to consider the constitutionality of a New York City ordinance that burdened the right recognized in Heller. And his final point was extremely important. In sum, the city's travel restriction burdened the very right recognized in Heller. History provides no support for a restriction of this type. The city's public safety arguments were weak on their face, were not substantiated in any way, and were accepted below with no serious probing. And once we granted review in this case, the city's public safety concerns evaporated. We're told that the mode of review in this case is representative of the way Heller has been treated in lower courts. If that is true, there is cause for concern. This case is not moot. The city violated petitioner's Second Amendment right, and we should so hold. And that's just the earlier case. If one looks at the other 10 cases, one sees a slasher film's worth of injustices, including, as Wolf notes, state attacks on magazine capacity and rapidity of fire, and one of the most important aspects of the supposed constitutional system, the ability of people to open carry nationwide. And that last one, by the way, doesn't involve solely the right to keep and bear arms. It ties into the important clause of the Constitution called the Full Faith and Credit Clause, found in Article 1, Section 4 of the supposed rule book for the country. And it's important because the clause clearly mandates that any legal license in one state must be recognized with full faith and credit in all states. This means that marriages will be recognized from state to state and driver's licenses will be recognized as valid from state to state so you can rent a car or drive over state borders. And of course, if the states are going to break the Second Amendment by making us get licenses for guns, it would also mean that any gun license issued in one state must be recognized in all states. But of course, the leftists aren't interested in that, and neither is John Roberts, as Adam Winkler writes for The Atlantic. So what explains the court's refusal to hear another Second Amendment case? Only the justices can be certain. But one thing we do know is that the court's decision to take a case requires the agreement of only four justices. And we also know that four justices, Neil Gorsuch, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, and Brett Kavanaugh are all on record saying that the court should take a Second Amendment case and address the very unanswered questions posed by the cases it turned away today. Those justices could have forced the court to take one of them, but they didn't. And one suspects that's because of John Roberts. Well, given the number of times Chief Justice John Roberts has turned his back on fundamental rights and the wording of the very Constitution that created his seat, this seems to be the case. We can only speculate, we can only wonder and feel the frustration over these people who are supposedly dealing in justice turning a blind eye to justice when it comes to the right to keep and bear arms. Let's hope this stops and people actually pay attention to their rights and speak up about this. Well, we're doing our part. Thank you for doing your part. And don't forget, if you're just joining us for the first time on YouTube, please like and subscribe and share these with some friends and ask them to do the same thing. Hit the little bell because it's supposed to tell you when new videos come out. And by the way, check to make sure if you have subscribed 
double check to make sure that you are still subscribed. I subscribed myself and I found out that YouTube unsubscribed me a few days ago. What a shock. <laughs> hey, by the way, talking about some good times, head on over to MRC-Store to get some great and very funny items from the Media Research Center. And please go to MRCTV.org to see everything that the team is doing over there. They're great people. For MRC TV, I'm Gardner Goldsmith.